I want you guys to appreciate that you've got, you've got a team of people that are supporting you that are like none other. There are very few companies in, in any industry that have this kind of a support team behind you. So I just want to make sure you appreciate that. And you've got, you've got two leaders that are obviously as passionate and interested in your success as anyone I've ever seen. So you've heard a lot from, uh, from Tom along the way. And so now just to put a big bow on it, put a bow on the package, we're gonna hear the State of the Union from your founder and your CEO, Stuart Vernon. So let's, let's let them know that, look, we're not out of energy, we're not out of gas, we're still pretty interested. And let's give a big welcome to your main guy, Stuart Vernon, come on, come on, let's go. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna start it off that way. All right, thank you. So I've got four minutes, I'm gonna do it quick. Um, I promise we don't have long, and this is uh, the end of, a, of obviously a long day and uh, a, a long two days, and, and your patience is, is certainly duly noted, so thank you. Um, I, I want to spend a few minutes and, and share some thoughts with you, as I always do, about some of the things that we feel like are going on in the company, uh, what we feel like is, is relevant and, and prevalent to how uh, our business is operating today and, and what we feel like is, is coming in the future. So I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, talking with you about that and then try to tie it all together with some thoughts on the theme uh, of what we've had for the past two days, leaders leading the swimming pool industry. I want to start with a show of hands if you have one employee or more. Let's, let's use uh, the summer, this past summer, this next summer as a reference. If you have one employee or more, raise your hand. Okay, stay with me now. Keep it up. If you have two or more employees, raise your hand. Three or more. Five or more. Six. Eight. Ten. Twelve. Fourteen. God, sixteen. How many do you have? Twenty? One, two, three at the end. Most of what's going on right now by this show of hands should tell you that a lot of the folks that are in this room are no longer just running a startup pool franchise, right? They're not running a one-man show, one-man truck, two trucks. They've turned into real, actual organizations, right? And as those organizations grow, sales grow. Sales grow, revenue grows. Revenue grows, employee bases grow. A couple interesting stats to note as far as where we stand as a company, specifically tomorrow night. So there will be 17 locations tomorrow night at the dinner, at the Sales Club Award dinner. 17. And I looked ahead to 2016, to the revenue that we've got on the books based on budgets for this year. There will be 26 or 27 locations at this same exact dinner tomorrow night, this coming meeting. That's incredible, it's incredible. 26 locations, that means right now, currently, because we're in the year, in 2016, 26 plus locations are running organizations that range in size from 500,000 to 2.7 million dollars. 26 plus locations, okay? If you break that down a step further, those 26 locations are going to make up company-wide revenue this year of $25 million. Now I want to take that a step further and break this thing down. Look at this. Last year, those same, if you look at those same exact locations, those same exact 26 locations, in 2015 they made up $19.5 million in revenue. Same exact locations. Look at a year, a year before that. $16.9 million, those same locations. Year before that, $13.6 million. Year before that, $11.9 million. 2011, those same exact locations right now, these same, a third of this room, those same 26 locations were doing $8.5 million in revenue. In a five-year period of time, those same 26 locations have gone from $8.5 million in revenue to $25 million in, in revenue. 
130 individual families, not counting the franchise owner, 130 individual employed families are out there with their life depending on that pool business, their mouths are being fed by that pool business. 130 was the number that I came up with. And that was astounding to me. You add those owners, those 26 owners, that's over 150 people uh, now versus five years ago that are no longer in that startup mode. They're no longer in that single owner operator mode. They are actually running organizations. Running an organization is not easy, right? It requires leadership. And that, when we took a step back and I said, okay, a couple months ago, what do we want to talk about at this year's event? What do we feel like is going on in the company? What are some changes? What are some trends? Uh, and, and you start breaking all the locations down and you look at just how many, over half of the room, are employing multiple people and multiple families. And that requires that leadership. Okay, and I thought, so if we talk about leadership and we, and we break down what, what each organization looks like, I think most of the organizations and most of these businesses would say we are either uh, the leaders of the organization, we could be better leaders, we could stand to improve that leadership capability, and that's where the theme for this year came from. We're all leaders, but let's look to be better. And so I thought as we're, as we're thinking about this and planning this, um, we could be better at a lot of things, right? We could be better not just at leading our organization, but better spouses, better friends, better family members, certainly better leaders as we look at running our business. Um, so it was with that in mind that I, I tried to think about what, what do I want to relate to the business? What can I share with, with the group that this might um, make a point and, and make sense? And a book that I read a few years ago kind of came back to me when I read Herschel's uh, presentation a, a few weeks ago and he talked about that eighth habit and so I looked back and, and read um, the seven habits again but I read the book with our company in mind and I said what if we took Stephen Covey's book the seven habits of highly effective people and we crossbred it and integrated it right into our system right into our business and I said let's title that the seven habits of the highly effective ASP owner Okay, so I want to spend a few minutes and just go through that with you and say, let's think about how each one of these pretty simple life, uh, the, the, the book is not a business book either. It's a, it's a life altering, it's a motivational type style book that is designed to help people live happier, healthier, more fulfilled lives. Well, what if those same uh, themes were applied directly into our business? And that's where I came up with this presentation. So I want to take a few minutes and, and have you think about it and, and go through them. Habit number one is be proactive. And as soon as I read this thinking about our business, I thought, uh, how often have you heard me say, as you analyze your business, are you working on your business or are you stuck working in it? Right, and look around the room today. How many of you after two days are thinking, man, a lot of what I've heard from either these pros or in the breakout sessions, if you find yourself being stuck in the day-to-day -day mire of the business, you get caught in that ditch, you're stuck in it, as opposed to working on the business. And that's where this habit really comes into play with our business, right? Are you, are you able to be proactive? Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. The thing that jumped out to me here, as soon as I read it, I thought, how often have you heard us say, and if you've been in pool school uh, in the last five years, you've heard me close the last day with, what is your exit strategy? Why? Because you can't deliver an effective plan without knowing where do you want to go. And you've all heard me use that analogy before over the years as I've talked about this. If you're not working on the business, if you're not looking ahead to the end of the year or the end of the three-year term or your exit strategy, you're making decisions day to day without the end in mind. Right? So two things here. What is your exit strategy? Or let's take it to a more micro level. Let's just talk about the year. What do you want to net this year? Right? How often have you heard us talk about that? Tom ha has, has created a phenomenal spreadsheet and worksheet and a budget based around a very, very simple question. How much money do you want to make this year? What do you want to net? Well, that's with the end in mind, right? That's at the end of 2016. I, as a business owner, would look back and hope that I made the right decisions in January, February, March, all throughout the year so that I could end the year where I wanted to. Okay, so you've got to work on beginning your day, your month, your week, your year with the goals in mind. That's what I, I took from this principle. Three, 
Put first things first. Any, anybody, uh, has anybody seen this formula before? This was the theme from three years ago. Okay, when I spoke to the group three years ago, I said, I've got to find a way to help everybody understand the difference in profit and cash flow. Because I really felt at the time there was this disconnect there. Everybody was thinking, you know, if you, th if you see it on paper and it's profit, that's what I'm doing. Well, a lot, a lot of what we were finding was time management was getting in the way, right? Bad habits were being formed. Stephen Covey would say, you've got to put first things first. And so I thought, let me throw up this old formula there. And for those of you that are new in the room, I want you to look at it and think about this. Cash flow equals profit plus or minus time management. Okay, if you're not putting first things first, and if you're a poor, if you're handling time management poorly, and if you're letting the inmates run the asylum, and you're not putting first things first, your time management becomes a problem, right? It becomes a red number up there, it becomes a red line up there, it becomes a decrease on your cash flow. Okay, so keep that in mind. You've got to put first things first. If I backed up a couple slides and showed you number one, you've got to be proactive. Right? Being proactive allows you to put first things first. Okay? The next one, think win-win. You've all heard me say very, very often, one plus one equals three. Right? If you take your business and put it with our roadmap and partner with the right vendors and let the vendors do their job and let the people that you're associated with do their job, you should come out better. One plus one should equal three. This one's a little wordy. Seek to understand first, then to be understood. I break this one down simply just to mean be a better communicator. Be a more effective communicator with your business. And this really gets into the heart of leadership, right? So often, it's just so easy to come in, get everybody together, get them out the door as quick as you can, get to running the routes, phone's ringing. But you've got to remember at the beginning of each day or the beginning of each management meeting that you have, you've got to lead that message. You've got to work on being the head communicator of your business. And then think, that message has also got to translate to your employees and your employees might leave. Some of them, 14, 15, 16 employees might leave and they're delivering your attitude and your message to your customers. Right? So really seek to work on that communication in 2016. Habit number six talks about synergy. To me, this one's really about building the team around you, right? Find the people that are best at what they do and employ them. I had a meeting at lunch today with one of our Lead 8 franchisee members, and we were talking about a, a, a key hire that he was struggling to make. Is he going to make it? Is he not going to make it? And after just a few minutes, I said, there's really no choice, right? There's, there's really no choice in the matter. It's a, it's, it's, it's a no-think situation. You've got to hire this specific employee for this specific role that you need. And you find the people that are good at what they do, employ them, and then work on those synergies. Find what they do better and let them build the team and build the, and build the game plan around them. Okay, one of, the, one of my favorite things I heard this entire meeting, uh, one of the most poignant things about business I've heard in a long time was Herschel uh, saying that employees are listed as expenses and our trucks are listed as assets. My favorite thing in two days that I heard in this entire meeting. And that's the truth, right? You've got to go back and think about synergy and think about win-win and think about how can you partner with the right employees. There's several employees in this room that I have heard uh, referred to as partners, right? Partners in the business. And that's really what gets into the heart of synergy. Okay, last one. Sharpen the saw. Simply, what does this mean? Herschel also hit on it. Is make yourself, how can you work on making yourself better so that your better self impacts the business and your better self impacts the business more positively. Right? The better you are, the more rested you are, the more mentally focused you are, the sharper you are, you're more willing to host those meetings in the morning, early in the morning. Maybe you're stopping off and picking up food and breakfast and drinks for your staff because you're, you're better rested. That gets into the synergy. That gets into the win-win. That gets into the being proactive. All of these seven things, as I thought about them all individually, re related so overwhelming to, to each one of our organizations. 
Okay, so my challenge to you in, in 2016, I always like to leave this meeting with a challenge, right? I'll summarize this by throwing these bullet points up and running through them quickly and just listen to them quickly as a whole. Be more proactive in your business. Work on your business. If you're in the ditch, find a way to get out of it. What does that mean? If you feel like you're stuck there all day, every day, maybe it takes a little capital, maybe it takes making the right hire, but you've got to get out of the ditch. You've got to be working on it. Begin 2016 with the end in mind. That means make a good game plan. Follow it. Put first things first and manage your time. Manage your cash flow. It's the most important thing in your organization or else nothing else matters. Right? Think win-win. Look around you for those things that are just really, really easy partnerships. Work on your communication. Synergize. Work on building that team. Sharpen the saw. Obviously, you've got to find a way to be more focused in 2016 than you were in 2015. That will spill over to your business. That will allow all seven of these things to happen. That will allow you to be a better and more effective owner in 2016 than you were in 2015. To me, that was an easy message this year to deliver to everybody from, from a whole over a course of two days. Because look around and, and, and how big the organizations are getting, each one of these. You've got locations that are winning sales awards and going over $2 million. You've got 25, 26 different families in the room that are running multi-vehicle operations. Right? So it's no longer about work on your cash flow and it's no longer about uh, building a foundation. That was the theme four years ago. And it's no longer about building a brand. I think we all know that the brand and it's being built. Now it's about take what has been created and work on it, be a better leader, apply that leadership to your business, and continue to grow. So that's the message that I wanted to share with you today. Um, I wanted to kind of off the script end by, by telling you this. Um, done this 10 meetings now. And this one was by far the easiest one. I think this one for sure by far was the best one. Um, it was not possible without the time, effort, and energy that you put in. And I open with that and I'll close with it. And we know that. Um, but to watch all the details come together and watch the energy and the, and the countless email, I, mean, I got emails last night and uh, text messages from so many people in this room just about the energy and, and, and the momentum that everybody felt. So from our staff, the thanks to putting it all together, uh, to each one of you being here, uh, take all this stuff back and apply it to your business. The worst thing that's going to happen to you if you do that is you're going to make a little more money this year than you did last year. It's the worst thing that's going to happen. Okay? Do all that. Um, I'll see you tonight. I think we've got a great party in store. One floor up. Piano's up there setting up and playing. It's a piano band. And uh, I thank you and I, I, I look forward to 2016. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.